Hi, welcome to Community Homeworks. Our class tonight is our favorite power tools. So if you have a favorite, go gather it up so you can share it with us. You can tell us about it. Um, you won't be able to show us a picture. So just think about it during class. If you have any questions, please be sure to type them in and we'd be glad to try to answer them for you. <clears throat> we have a nice collection of our instructors this evening to share their favorite tools. And I think Jason might even have one and I have a couple. So we hope you enjoy tonight's class. If you do and you're able to help support our organization, we are a nonprofit and we do rely on donations and grants to be able to do what we do for the community. Um, how to donate will scroll across the bottom of your screen. And again, you can watch us right now and type in questions. If you have a question when you're watching this at a later date, um, the email address scrolls across the bottom also and just send it there and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can with an answer. <clears throat> again, tonight, it's our favorite hand, or not hand tools, power tools. We did hand tools. It was fun. So we hope you have a good time tonight, too. I'd like to welcome Gary and Harry. Howdy. Tim. Good and evening. Sam. Hi there. And Jason, are you going to join us on screen or are you going to stay behind? I'm staying okay. behind the screen. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> He says he's staying oh, behind the scene. Okay, I thought he was, said he was staying on the screen. So um, we're going to share our favorite hand tools. And I think I'll start with Sam tonight. Go ahead, Sam. Sam has some okay. guests in the background. So if you hear strange noises, those are the ducks and the geese. Ducks and the geese <laughs> next door. I think someone's feeding them right now. So they get pretty excited about that. <laughs> As do I. Um, all right. So I... I brought, the first thing I'm going to show you is something that I think most people might already have in that this is a, a impact driver and I use this almost every day. I don't show up to a job without it. Um, it's something that's always in the tool bag in one form or another. Um, it's cordless. It's got a lot of uh, torque to it, which, which is what I like. Um, it's got a handy little belt clip. I don't know if you can see that. And um, uh, it's nothing too flashy, but it's definitely gets a lot of use and abuse. And so um, I've been through a couple of these over the years. They typically last pretty well, but when you drop them, that tends to shorten their life. Um, and uh, I guess that's it. I don't know. There's, you know, power settings on it, uh, different speeds uh, that you can use. And, um, that's battery powered. So it's very handy for me. For the average homeowner, you know, we're going to do a few repairs around our house. Do you recommend battery operated or corded? And do you have a brand that you would oh. say might be more for the average use as opposed to someone like you who does remodeling and builds houses and, you know, beyond our scope? <laughs> hey, um, I like cordless if you can afford it, right? And um, I think they're comparable uh, almost to a lot of ported tools, if not better in some ways, especially the impact drivers. Um, I was gifted a Milwaukee um, uh, a battery operated tool, and that's how I ended up kind of going down the Milwaukee line of tools. And so, um, uh, but not all my cordless tools are Milwaukee, but I, it's been a good brand. Um, I actually have my other impact driver is in getting repaired because it was covered under warranty. It stopped working. Um, the only, you know, drawback to that is you got to wait seven to eight weeks for them to get a part in now with uh, the part shortages that are out and about. So. Right. And I know one of the things that Lee talks about when he does our power tool classes is that one of the most important things about getting something like an impact driver or a drill is to make sure you like holding it absolutely um, yeah. especially for some of us older ladies don't get the heaviest one because if you have to do two hands to even hold it steady you're not going to be happy and you're not going to use that tool right and there's other so I, this has kind of a large battery in it 
there's smaller batteries that can go in there that does adjust the weight. Um, and I used to have a Bosch driver before this, and it, I had to wear ear protection. It was so loud operating. I mean, I probably should be wearing ear protection all the time, but that you couldn't, there, you could not have a conversation or, or um, it was painful to use in enclosed spaces, so. Great information, thank you. We'll be back. How about you, Tim? Okay. Um, I've got uh, I, two of my favorite tools um, are the Star one. <laughs> yep. But it, 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 it first started with a um, with a Sawzall. That was the first tool I ever bought in the early 90s. That was the first thing I got. The cordless, the cordless drill driver was just coming out. They had the 12 volt. Um, that was the second thing I bought. But I'll tell you my favorite tool now that has taken over for the Sawzall, and that's an oscillating cutter. This is an oscillating tool, and this will do everything a Sawzall would do and more. Um, it has many different types of bits, and I'll tell you what I did with this tool today. Um, these have small teeth on it that are bimetal. Let me see here. Very fine teeth. Um, and I've got uh, some that have a little more aggressive teeth. Uh, I have one that I use to take tile backsplash off. And then I also have a head that I use to sand. This has sandpaper on it and it just vibrates. And uh, I, I used actually use this today too. Now, this comes in with me no matter what I'm doing. If I'm working as an electrician, I bring it in, um, especially if I'm doing a remodeling job. Uh, let me show how this bit goes in here. The bit slides into the tooth, whoop, <laughs> the, the tooth head here. And then there's a lever. Uh, let me see here. Everything's backward. And you just turn this around until it tightens up, snug it up, turn the handle and lock it. And it just vibrates back and forth. Um, if I'm working as an electrician, as an electrician, you don't want your boxes recessed back behind combustible surfaces. And not always do I know. Sometimes I do. Not always do I know what the wall covering is going to be. We ask that, but homeowners change that so often. And so I usually leave my, leave my boxes out a solid half, sometimes a little bit more. And sometimes they decide, oh, we decided not to go with wainscot in the dining room. We're just going to finish it with drywall. So then I would take this tool and I would go right along the uh, drywall and I would cut the excess plastic because the boxes that we use are either bake light or they're plastic. And I can cut that off flush with the drywall. Um, if I'm doing a remodeling job and I'm, and I'm installing an old work box, uh, this works great to cut out an old work box. It kind of takes the place of a jigsaw too. Um, for example, today I replaced a door. So I used my oscillating cutter to cut the shims, cut the nails that were going through the shims. I cut the old door loose. And when I went to install my new door, of course, you have to measure your jam legs. I use that tool. I mark. I mark the jam legs with my uh, with my quickie square, and I cut those jam legs with this oscillating cutter. I don't have to bring in a lot of different tools. I can bring in my wireless trim nailer. I can bring in this oscillating cutter, and I'm in pretty good shape as long as I don't have to cut the slab of the door down. Um, but then I can shim the door how I need to, and then I come right behind instead of using a razor knife time and time again, you know, to score those shims and break them off. Once again, I can use my oscillating cutter, angle those shims back, and then cut them off so they're out of the way of the casing. Um, so I did that today. Uh, a shower surround was put around uh, in this house the other day, and I was installing the trim kit on it. Well, they didn't cut the hole around the faucet large enough, and there's a couple screws that hold the trim plate on for this Delta faucet. So I once again took my oscillating cutter and I cut around that that faucet valve, the shower valve, so I could get those screws through there. I already had the tool in the house. 
worked great. I used a fine tooth blade on that so it didn't jump and skip all over the place and it and it works perfect. Um, I did have to uh, the way that the uh, the shower surround was designed, I actually had to move the faucet more toward the the shower surround. It was set too far back in the wall. The plumber didn't know what type of surround that we had and he just set it flush pretty much uh with the stud wall so we had to cut those nails loose on the board that supported those i was able to do that with my oscillating cutter i could move that faucet forward so the trim kit could be mounted on the surface once again i already had the tool in the house in the bag i keep all these all these blades so i i took care of that also um i uh, am redoing the kitchen floor too. So I had underlayment. I went to lay my underlayment. And when I would come to a doorway, I would use my oscillating cutter and I would undercut the trim. I would undercut the, the stop on the door frame. So my, so my underlayment could go right underneath that trim and right underneath the door stops. So it fit perfectly. I'll have to do it again once I go to lay the floor, but there was this tool again. Um, so I'm able to, I was able to do that today. What else did I do today? Oh, I had uh, where my joints came together on my um, underlayment. I sand those and this is what I use. Um, I go right down those joints. I sand them before I, uh, before I uh, put a uh, uh, compound on those and uh, this works great. Um, the uh, you can uh, you can cut drain piping. I never cut copper with it because um, we use PEX quite a bit, and you want that nice and round. You can cut drains with it. The PVC for the drains, which which I did when we removed the old tub, um, just an incredibly handy tool. They're like I have Rockwells. Um, and it's, I have a couple of them actually. Uh, they're like 90 bucks. And then you have, it comes with a few blades and also the sanding head and probably a dozen or so sanding pads. Um, you can buy an assortment of blades for like 25 bucks. Very affordable, very handy. Uh, everyone should have one, in my opinion. And once you know what it can do, it's it's this is probably the tool other than a uh, a cordless drill driver. This is probably the tool I use the most. I very rarely get my saws all out anymore, and that used to be my MVP. This has taken over for it. Thank you. When you answered the questions, I was going to ask you like, can you buy extra blades that do different things and stuff? Sounds like you can. Absolutely. Um, you know, so you can you can buy what you need kind of for that project, but then you can add on when a new project comes along. Absolutely. I am um, I'm doing a project at uh, Coloma School. Somebody ran into the building and I had to cut out some block and I would I would use this inside because it uh, they had block on the outside, four inch block on the outside. They had eight inch block on the inside. I didn't want to use a grinder to cut that out. So I used a vacuum. I had a diamond blade in this and I would cut the mortar around that with a vacuum. There, there are so many specialized bits that you can use. Uh, it's, it's just a great tool, a great tool. And it, this has lasted. I bought two because if you can see the motor on this, I mean, it's full of drywall dust. It's full of mortar. You name it, it's full of it. So I expect this thing to die any time, and it just keeps going. Uh, it's it's great. I can't say enough good about it. It's a great tool, and it's not expensive. Great. Thank you. Sure. I hadn't ever heard of one of those, so I'm glad yeah, to learn great. something new. All right. How about you, Harry? What's your favorite? Well, i tell you what. I was going to say the same thing. This is a favorite tool, but I'm not going to talk about it since everyone said but I will say you got the Rockwell at ninety dollars. Yeah, I was like eating it. Yeah, I bought the Menards for like twenty because I figured <laughs> I'm only going to use it once. 
I have used this as often as you have, and it's holding on, but not, I don't know when it's going to go, but I will buy a better quality next time. And that's what I say. Always buy the best tool you can afford. This was one I could have afforded more. I just didn't think I'd use it. So I'll go on to something else. All right, everybody knows about these, the staple gun. And we use these for insulation. We use them for all, you can name all kinds of things. The thing about the staple gun is, as you start getting a little older, you realize that pushing that trigger is just getting a little harder. So, where'd it go? There it is. I bought an electric staple gun. The electric staple gun, I don't know, it wasn't that terribly expensive. Does the same I think thing. Mine looks just got like one it. too. <laughs> and the thing about it is, it shoots every staple that the other one does. Just pull a trigger. I can pull the trigger because it's not loaded and it's also not connected. You know, this one will also shoot very small brads. In fact, I'll see if I can show that. You can see the staple, and it shoots a very short little um, 5 8 inch or a half inch brad. Useful for very small trim and so on. So this is one of my favorite tools, just because it's so much easier to use. Just pull the trigger, boom, it's done, rather than trying to work this many, many times over. My only trouble with it is remembering how to put the staples in it. I always have to stop and think about it because I there again, I don't use it frequently, but when I do, my little old arthritic hands have no problem. <laughs> I've reupholstered chairs. I've done all sorts of weird things with it that it probably wasn't meant to do, but I've done them. <laughs> they're, they're very handy to have. They, they're just... It makes life easier. It sure the other, does. <laughs> the other thing is, if you don't have power, then you're stuck with the hand use. Um, I don't know. There's probably a battery-operated version out there, but I'm not 100% sure of that. And one thing I will say that was brought up earlier about battery over a, a corded electric, what I liked about the corded, the uncorded battery-operated when I was out in the field is it seemed like we never had a day where it didn't rain. And it's just far safer to use a battery operated tool than it is a corded tool. Especially if you remember to charge the extra battery so that you can keep working all day. <laughs> well, that can cause a lot of bad words to be said, but other than that, yes. <laughs> Isn't that part of, you know, doing projects is to learn words you didn't know before? <laughs> How about you, Gary? School, I taught high school construction. I learned a lot of words. <laughs> Gene, I see we have a question about um, uh, what an impact driver does. Uh huh. So, just I use my impact driver typically for driving screws, nuts, bolts, lag screws a lot on the site, but I'll also throw um, a drill bit in here and uh, use it uh, to drill holes if I need to. So, right. But it just has a lot of torque to it, and it also is has a hammering act, slight hammering action to it, then that, that really uh, drives right. the screw home. Where a drill really is meant to just drill holes. Typically, yeah. You know, and if you think of it this driver, way, if you take a, a wrench and tap it with a hammer, it tends to loosen a bolt. That's the effect of an impact driver, just like that hammer is just tapping it while it's turning. Right, so it's kind of... I don't know, going in and gripping better. I don't know how to what words I want, but yeah. So thank you for the question, Dorothy. Go ahead, Gary. Okay. Well, these these don't look like power tools, but I want to show what I learned just a couple of years ago. My favorite two dollar screwdrivers. You can take them apart and make a long one. Oh, by combining two of them together? By combining two of them, <laughs> you can make a long one and get some distance. And then, Ooh, he went from a hand tool to a power tool. To, to make a power tool out of it. <laughs> 
Um, so that's kind of a kind of a useful hint. Not not anything earth shattering, but kind is of a it, useful thing to know. Is it secure or stiff or you know truly locked together, or do you have to kind of hold it where you put the two pieces together? It looks looks a little. Oh, um, oh, a little, but there's there's. There's oh, enough to grip. Keys. And you could you could leave that hang out a little extra too if you wanted. So yeah, you can you can get enough you can get enough to uh, do all the torque you want with it. Wonderful. And not earth shattering, but that's what I had. Hey, that's great. I have um, more. I'll I'm going for quirky today. Oh, good. Well, so I kind of was too. I thought until. Um, I had my my um, staple gun, but my other favorite power tool, and it's probably because I do things that you guys don't do, is a glue gun. <laughs> they do make battery powered ones, but they're quite expensive compared to a cord, and they don't draw massive amounts of power like some power tools. So, you know, you can use a typical household extension cord with it if you have to be that far away from your project. This one happens to be a low temp one. Um, so you it gets warm and it still will glue things, but it doesn't necessarily burn your fingers. Um, depending on what you're gluing, you might need hot glue. And then I always keep a little glass of water in case the glue gets on my hand. I can quickly put my finger in the water. Or your favorite Dollar Tree sells finger protectors. They're silicone, just like baking equipment. And that way you don't burn your fingers when you're using your hot glue gun. You get at least two in a package for a dollar. This glue gun is actually from the Dollar Tree. It was a dollar. And the bags of glue are a dollar. So for three dollars, you can do all sorts of fun. And you can use it for little repairs around your house. I've I've glued things, you know, back together with this stuff. Um, at the craft stores, you can even buy like Gorilla Glue, um, but I think you have to have a hot temp glue gun to use it to make it because it's such a stronger glue. You need that heat to melt the glue. But I have, I think, four glue guns of various sizes and temperatures, and they get used a lot around my house. <laughs> so. That's pretty handy. I use glue guns when I'm trimming out a house. I can do the returns when I run baseboard. And I cut it on a 45 and then I glue a return to return it back to the wall. So it's not a butt cut. It's got the detail of the, the profile of the trim on it. I hot glue that little wedge. And that's very handy. I didn't know they had glue guns like that. Mine rides around. I use it every, I don't know, not very often. And they get the heck kicked out of them in my truck in the toolbox. That's good to know because I, I won't invest what I did with these, especially if the glue is a buck too. Yeah, are they the are. large tubes or are they the small ones? They're the short, like they're short and tiny because this Perfect. Glue yeah. is really tiny. They're the skinny, they're the skinny glue. Yep, um, that's great. But I have, I have a gun that takes the big fat ones that are, you know, a foot long too, but I mean, it's like pencil size. Okay. Yeah, backward stuff that I'm not doing well with tonight. Um, yeah. You know, but that, it's amazing how far the glue goes, and you don't need tons of it. Um, but I, I do, I use them a lot for all my craft projects or for minor repairs. You know, the, the picture frame won't stay together. You put a little hot glue in there and corner clamp it, and <laughs> it's all fixed. So the, the uh, glue guns that are the low temp, do they also, when they're not being utilized, do they also puddle glue? under the nozzle or does is that eliminated no it's not totally eliminated but it's not as fast to drip as a hot glue one okay yeah I always, I always just put a piece well i actually have a cookie sheet that i usually have out just because i'm usually doing a craft mm -hmm. and so i just have an old cookie sheet that shouldn't be used for cookies <laughs> right. um, that i use especially if i'm going to have glitter or anything because it kind of contains it but um either that or i put a piece of wax paper or plus this stuff dries really fast and you can mm -hmm. usually pick it off any surface just with your thumbnail and pop it right off. 
Thank you. You're welcome. How about you, Sam? Do you have another tool? I've got a few here. And Good. I like the, the glue guns for making templates, right? If I need a template, I'm going to take a few small pieces, glue them together, then I can transfer that out and make my uh, countertop or whatever I'm doing. So thanks for the tips. <laughs> um, this is another tool that um, I use on occasion. It's a orbital sander. Um, I got into the trades I and uh, the, the people I work for had these quarter sheet, large orbitals or sort of orbital sanders that I spent a lot of time on in my youth sanding. I really like the, the orbital sander. It moves um, at a higher speed, there, but it's also adjustable speed. Um, you can put on different kinds of uh, sandpaper on the bottom. Um, one reason I bought this because it came with an attachment um, that I could put on, then uh, put my vacuum cleaner onto the end so I'm not breathing in dust. Um, and it can put, you know, uh, sanding uh, rough things all the way to high polished finish things on here. So I also have a number of uh, different flat feet or different uh, bottoms I can put on. So depending on what I'm sanding, it'll work better. And does that sandpaper, it, it looks like it's just sticking. You don't have to clamp it in or anything. So this is a hook and loop, it's called. It's basically a, like, Velcro. like a Velcro. And you just line up the holes on the bottom so that the, the sand will come out here. I have another foot. Um, if I'm doing a lot of production sanding, I swap that one out. It's a uh, sticky back. So yeah, I use this sticky back paper. It lasts longer. It's um, and I can press harder with it. So uh, I, have, I have a little sander, but it's the kind that takes a sheet of paper like this big, and you have to open the clamp and tuck it in and clamp right. it down and move it to the other right. and clamp it yeah. down. And that's sometimes the, that's where it rips because you've messed with the clamps. And <laughs> yeah, and holding that down and tucking it in, and then folding it over and getting it to tuck in on the other side. Yeah. I've, I've caught my fingers in the clamp before and, and things like that. This is a lot, lot more convenient with the hook and loop. So. And you like the orbital as opposed to mine goes, you know, this way, I guess. This is, you know, um, it supposedly gives you a better finish. You do have to be careful if you're going too fast, it will leave little swirl marks. Um, but you know, if you're careful, it'll, it'll do a good job. And I usually go with the grain when I'm sanding regardless but um, um, I've been told you don't have to do that but you know good practice to go with the grain when you're saying okay great how about you Tim got another one oh Jason muted you might have to wait for Jason to, there you go now Tim's with us again I um I brought my favorite tool in but I do have another that I just picked up. Uh, because I'm doing a tile floor where I where I put that uh, put that underlayment down, and uh, what I like to do is uh, I like to use a laser. Um, I've got a laser. I haven't even taken it out of the package yet. I just picked it up, and it is fantastic. It shoots a laser all the way across the floor. Um, there are so many ways to use these lasers, and you can get them reasonably. Um, you do have to be cautious because they are lasers and you never want to look into it. Be aware of your surroundings. But I use them for drop ceilings. I use them when I'm wiring. Um, I will, so all my boxes are the same height all the way around. Switches and outlets. When I'm outdoors, I'll put it on a tripod. You can buy a tripod to go with this. And then I can mark, I can set the, uh, I can set the laser up and it, you can get a laser detector for it and you can mark three sides of the house and then you can go to the opposite side and you can mark that side. Um, so you're sure that all your, all your siding lines up all the way around the house. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, well, it's handy enough that I needed to go get a new one today. So, uh, <laughs> you know, when, when you, and this is another one of those things, when you have one, 
you find a lot of things that you can do with it. And it's it's pretty handy. And they're not cost prohibitive. You can spend a lot of money or you can get one reasonably for do-it-yourself projects. Um, hey, I use it for hanging cabinets. I'll put a I'll put a laser line all the way around the kitchen and then put up my uh, I'm usually working by myself. So I'll put a cleat up on the wall to help hold the upper cabinets and it gets them perfectly level all the way around. It just saves a lot of time instead of putting a level on the wall, striking a line um, and they're self leveling. You don't there's nothing you have to do except let it settle and then you do want to make sure that the floor is firm um, because a floor will flex and if somebody walks across or stands next to it that can make it dip or dip or dive but you can also mount them on the wall so it doesn't uh so it doesn't fluctuate like that but um lasers pretty handy sounds like one <laughs> I think I think like you said though that sometimes you buy a tool for a purpose and then you go, Oh, I could use it for that too yeah. or you know, I mean you could even plot your flower garden if you want it to be straight across the front of your house or you know, it doesn't have to be construction, I guess, maybe it could be Yeah, you'd want to wait until dusk to do something like that so you could see it. But yeah, you could absolutely mark across the ground for your rows and, and plant your rows. You sure could. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. How about you, Harry? What what else do you have in your bag? Well, I got one, one or two other things, but let's just go with this one. Bought this many years ago. And as Tim said, you, uh, you've got the um, oscillating saw. You can put a pad, sanding pad on it. Well, we didn't have the oscillating saw when I did this. So I got this detail sander. And just like the other ones, you could stick a piece of sandpaper on it. Actually, I bought this. We, um, at our other house, we had a carpeted stairway. And like most construction, especially new construction, carpeted stairways are there because they use rough lumber and had drywall and paint all over it. We wanted to stain those, so I had to use this. And it was able to get into the corners and sand down the corners of the stairway. And then I went to the oscillator or the uh, orbital sander to sand it down. These are still available. They're relatively inexpensive. But to be quite honest with you, if I were to buy this again, I would go and get an oscillating saw, even an inexpensive one, and use the pad sander for that. Is that like a Dremel tool? Would no, it, it vibrates. It's, it, okay. it's got a motor in it. Just like the oscillating saw, this head will just start vibrating and use it just as a sander. Okay. How about you, Gary? I know you've got another one out there somewhere. As, as I said, I was going for quirky tonight. Good. We like quirky. I like quirky. Here we have, there, get it in the light, an ozone generator. And I don't know how much any of you have ever wanted or needed to deal with an ozone generator. <laughs> but um, if you have a moldy, mildewy, room or car or nasty pet smells different different kind of odors uh one of the big uses for these were uh and still are hotel rooms where they're trying to clean up after a smoker uh you'll set one of these in a room and crank it up for an hour and most of the cigarette smoke will disappear um it's not a substitute for actually wiping things down and getting all the mold and mildew and dirt out. But after you've done those kind of things and you can't get the last bit of odor to go away, uh, an ozone generator's uh, a real handy thing to have. Um, I think eBay for $60, you can pick one up. So would that help if you, you're running a dehumidifier in your basement, you know, to help keep that musty smell down with, would running that like all the time help or an hour once a week or? Yeah, yeah probably, probably an hour once a week, something like that. The, um, they do have a timer. This has a two hour timer on it and it's not something that you want to be breathing. Um, 
it's you want to close the room up okay run it, run it for its time and then let it dissipate um i i compare it to when you pour the bleach in the washing machine you just you don't want to stand there and breathe that stuff uh, you know it's it, it's not good for you you don't you don't want to you're not gonna you're not gonna die from it but it's not good to not good to be breathing too much of it well then i have a quirky question for you because this question came up a couple of weeks ago when we had our all about mold class oh. so i wanted to know how to take the musty smell out of like old books could you put um, your books in a like a big plastic bag and i have i have put i've put an entire recliner in a christmas tree bag with one of these yes so dorothy i hope you're still watching maybe that will help your musty smell <laughs> there i use ozone ozone generators for fire restoration yes. um it yes. is they are great but it is oxygen depleting it turns the moisture in your lungs to hydrogen peroxide um we do have to put a, a skull and crossbones on the door uh animals can't be around it plants it'll kill plants and and, and uh when gary bought that it came with a we have one here in our in our living room it's an air purifier and it does have the ozone yeah exactly yeah it, it does have the ozone option on it but you do have to be cautious um and it will, what's that it says to read carefully yeah 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 that's <laughs> You know, so for an extended period of time, it will deteriorate rubber seals and things like that. So if you're going to use it somewhere, just just be aware, read up on it. They're great tools. They're excellent tools and they work like a champion. Um, but you do With want caution. to. You, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like in her garage to take the musty smell, smell out of her books because there'd be enough air circulating around and no pets outside and no plants in her garage or you know that's what's nice about the timer you you let it go you open up the door and it, it smells like um it smells like in the summertime uh when it's hot outside and rain first begins to fall on like hot asphalt that's the smell at least that i always associate it with um it, it's got a really fresh smell that you'll it's it's one of those things you don't forget you smell it and it takes you back to a day you were caught in a rainstorm or something like that on a hot day but they they do they work great you just have to be cautious and is that a tool you could rent at a rental place or should you Liability wise, I think that might that might be an issue. Okay. Liability wise, that I'm not sure who would rent one of those. They make a they make a machine now. It's called the hydroxyl, and it's very similar, except they they use that in um, like nursing homes, in occupied spaces, ho uh, uh, hotels, hospitals, nursing homes, where there's a lot of odor that they want to eliminate. And that's kind of their answer to the um, to the ozone generator, but it's not as effective. It, it does work, but it's not quite as effective. But that is an option too. And in, unless they come down in price, they're those are like three thousand dollars. I mean, a yeah, lot more. yeah, we spent a lot on yeah. hydroxyls, and also with our crystal ozone generator. That was quite pricey too. That was a three crystal unit, and that was very expensive. Yeah. Gary, about how much did your, your little one cost? I, I think this was fifty nine dollars. You know, de depending where you buy them. Yeah, but so you don't have to spend three thousand dollars though. <laughs> yeah, but or, but you don't want to short term home use. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to stay in the room with these either. So right, but yeah. you know, there again, read carefully, follow the directions, yeah. just like you should with any power tool. Yeah. Um, 
you know, they're power tools. They, they can hurt you if you don't do them correctly. Yes. But we have time for one more quick one from everybody. Sam, what have you got? Okay, so this last one was a Christmas present to myself last year. Um, and I don't haven't used it a lot, but I needed it. We had a, a number of uh, branches come down at my house and large, large branches and a few trees and then a couple of trees that needed to get clearer. So I ended up buying a uh, Whoa. chainsaw. <laughs> it's just a 14 inch, but um, it takes two batteries. So it's uh, technically 36 volt uh, chainsaw. And it did the trick. It, I, I did get an aftermarket chain for it, um, but it was, yeah, had to respect this. It, it's not a toy. It worked great. It, um, it came with two sets of batteries. So when I ran out of one, I just plugged in the other batteries that were charged and kept going. And I, you know, ran this thing for four or five hours to start with. And then it's been, it been, um, very useful and has held up real well. So, um, that looks, I mean, I hate to use the word toy, but that looks like a powerful tool. <laughs> it, it is, yeah, it is. But, you know, it, it's a little deceptive because there's no loud noise. There's no gas. You're not uh, having to mix the fuel to go in here. Um, it's a lot cleaner to, to use. Um, you're not, um, I always like seem like my old chainsaw I was always pulling and pulling and pulling and and then I'd flood it and um, was never that was never my repertoire or you know was never good at that so this has has filled a niche for me and and um, and it's it seems to work I'm not going to cut down any large trees with this uh, but for my I live on a in a city lot 30 you know um, 66 by 132 have a few trees that need trimming and um, this did the trick so and now I go to my friend's house and help them cut firewood <laughs> now now you're everybody's friend huh <laughs> <laughs> cool tools <laughs> yeah I, yes I can't I haven't like been able to lend it out yet to somebody but um, um, I'm more than happy to go over and cut cut wood well, you're still having fun with it. That's why you won't lend it out to anyone. <laughs> yeah, but and it's been it's been good. And like you know, and so it's not the Milwaukee brand, but the deal was too good to not get this this one with the extra batteries in it. So, well, yeah, having extra batteries is always a nice yeah. bonus. <laughs> How about you, Tim? You got anything else you'd like to share? No, Other I'm an underachiever. <laughs> I'm an underachiever. No, those are the only two tools I brought in the house. Well, Sorry, fellas. Got to pick up my slack. Before class, um, Tim did suggest his coffee bean grinder. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that that's those an important, important power tools. tool also because it's really hard to grind those beans by hand, guys. <laughs> and I just got a juicer, too. So, yeah, that's a good tool also. How about you, Harry? Got something else you'd like to share? Sure, I'll give it one more, just real quick. A pneumatic nailer. This is a, actually a brad nailer, as opposed to a finished nailer. A finished nailer uses a little heavier duty nail. These are just little 18 gauge nails. Um, what I like about an air powered finished nailer is if you're when you're doing trim out work, you're trying to hold a nail, the trim and the hammer all at the same time. This one just puts a much nicer finish in and I can hold it, bang, go through, does a fine job. In fact, I've just been using it quite a bit. We're refinishing our stairway at this house and uh, it does a real nice job on the trim work. Um, one little word of warning, if you're using any kind of a finished nailer, kind of check what's behind it. Um, at our other house, I put a mahogany door in, did a fine job. I trimmed it all out. And when I went to open it, it was kind of stuck. And I thought, well, maybe it was just some of the finish. It was still stuck on the uh, the weather stripping. And I gave it a good, good yank. One of the nails had hit something behind in the wall and 
curved and went into the door. Well, the door opened, but a little chunk of wood came off of it. And speaking of bad words, mothers were bringing their kids off the street. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, this is not one of those tools that the a typical homeowner tool, but I guess I'm not a typical homeowner. I still do an awful lot of work around the house. I guess I'm not typical of much of anything, really. But <laughs> Well, that's why we're all having such a good time here. How about you, Gary? You got anything else you want to share? Well, this this is not an unusual tool. This is just an ordinary little Dremel, but uh, it really works good on a difficult toenail, a difficult <laughs> toenail, and this will do the job with a little patience. You can picture me getting my foot in the sink to run water over it for cooling purposes. And this will do the job. <laughs> and then you use your shop vac to unplug the drain. <laughs> <laughs> that I loved that one the last time we talked <laughs> about tools. <laughs> oh, that was good. Now I have a, a, a kind of a question for all of you, I guess. If I'm going to do a project. Don't know if I'll ever use this tool again. Do you advise going and renting one? Or do you go and buy, like Harry's always said, buy what you can afford or or buy what you think, like, like you did with your um, oscillating um, saw. You weren't sure you were ever going to use it for another project, so you didn't buy the $100 one. You bought the $25 one where where should people fall in that acquiring <laughs> in my opinion you've got to do soul searching is what it comes down to um and i didn't with that case i would have bought a little more expensive one had i known um renting tools uh, you got to look at what's the cost the initial cost of the tool and what you're going to use it for uh and this one i probably should have thought you know it, it's my son has one. He uses it all the time. Why didn't I go ahead and do that? But I didn't. Um, if it were going to be where I was going to put drains in the basement where I had to break up concrete, I probably wouldn't buy a jackhammer for that. I'd probably rent that. So, you know, it's a trade-off. You just got to figure out what are you going to use it for? How often are you going to use it? Yeah, what's everybody else's opinion? <laughs> I agree. Um, like the one that Harry bought, Harry's was less than 50 bucks. If you go down to Goggin and you go to rent one, I doubt you'd get out of there for less than 20 bucks. Um, and you probably have to, at least when I've ever rented anything there, there was a cost for the bit because the bit, whatever you're, whatever you're cutting with, you're going to wind up buying that too. Um, like, uh, for example, when I would, I would rent their, uh, pneumatic, uh, jackhammers when I bust out concrete stairs or something like that, and you'd pay us a, a tool sharpening fee. Um, it's going to be the same because this is a, you know, th this item is, is you're going to utilize it and it's going to be destroyed when you're done. So I'd say you, you, uh, all it take is a phone call or get online see what it costs to rent one. They rent tools at, at uh, Menard, so you can see what it costs to rent it. You can walk right back in the store and see what it costs to purchase one. Um, and they do the same at Home Depot, I believe. I believe they still rent tools there. So you can do a cost comparison right there, see see what all the fees are gonna be and uh, include all the consumables such as this and uh and you can you can just it, it's consumer math you can calculate what it's going to be um and you know i mean if it's like an oscillating cutter like this i'd recommend just going to buy one because once you utilize it you're going to be able to use it for so many things you know reglazing windows uh once you get the glass out you can you can uh you can run a fine tooth right along instead of heating it up with a torch I use it to cut that old hardened caulk out because I can control it. 
um, I'll wear a glove and I'll guide the I'll guide the bit right down on it and I'll and I'll cut that out and then I'm not heating that lead paint up with a torch because chances are it's lead paint. I'm still creating dust, but um, I just soon not heat it up. You know, I got this on my truck and I can I can cut that hardened stuff out that I used to have to hit with a torch to soften it up. There's just so many things you can do with it. But if you're gonna like, refinish your floors with a big drum sander, I wouldn't go buy a big drum sander that you know you you know no. rent it, you know because what are you gonna do with it once you're done? <laughs> right, right, yeah. And I think the Kalamazoo Public Library is starting to um, loan out a, a strange assortment of things. I think most of them are more like kitchen gadgets like if you want to try an instant pot or an air fryer or something but they really? make tools too and several of the neighborhood associations in kalamazoo i know wash or uh, edison and east side both have tool share programs where you can go and um sign a tool out for a few days or a week or whatever i don't know how many power tools they have but they do have you know tools too that you know, if, if you, it's something you're going to use once, check and see if your neighborhood association has it that you can borrow. Um, or you can borrow my cat that wants to dump my wastebasket over. <laughs> if, you need, if you need destruction, you know, if it's destruction day, just, you know, the cat's available. <laughs> need the table cleared off? You know, he's really good at that. He definitely is a flat earth cat, so... Um, that tool share program is great. I didn't know that was uh, that was out there. That's a great way to kick the tires with a tool and see. Yeah. See how I you like. Know, I don't know how fancy the tools like. Like you have to live in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you want to borrow from Edison, you have to live in Edison. But they have rakes and different oh. sizes and shapes of shovels and different kinds of ladders, and um, they do have a rototiller. Um, so we you know, which is a power tool, but it's sure. probably not something unless you're going to plant a huge garden every year that you need, you might want to just use it initially to do something. So, mm -hmm. but Jason, did you have any tools you wanted to share? <laughs> I wasn't planning to share, but I brought one, I brought one just in case. And I wanted to stick with Gary's thing of being random and, and obscure. <laughs> so I, I brought my, um, my carving knife, my electric carving knife that I got as a wedding gift. I have <laughs> never actually used this to cut meat, but I have used it to cut foam, like foam uh -huh. insulation and foam for, um, we had an old camper and we were redoing the, um, a we were redoing the cushions. And so we cut, yeah. we got cushion foam and cut it with this thing. So, um, it's a, it's a Hamilton beach, I think. So, um, I, I still don't know why we have it because I've only used it once or twice, but still it's a, it's an obscure tool. But it's a great tool that you can usually find at a thrift store for like less than $5. And it's the best thing ever for cutting the foam for chairs and cushions and stuff. And it will give you the nicest, cleanest cut imaginable. I mean, I, that's why I have one. I've never used it in my kitchen. It's downstairs with my tools. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions or comments? Um, I hope this maybe helped some of you with your Christmas shopping ideas. Um, you know, and some of them are every homeowner's desire and some of them might be only if you're doing something special. Hello, girls. I see you. <laughs> Jason would probably rent them out too. So, you know, you can have two girls or a cat or, you know, whatever. We're pretty flexible here. Um, anything else you'd like to add, Sam? I'm proud. I've got another tool here called the RotoZip. Oh, so good. Could show us that real quick. I'm an oscillating tool now after seeing the um, uh, <laughs> talking about that. But I RotoZip is what I've used for cutting into um, uh, plaster because I can put a little shroud on it and um, it, attach my vacuum to it. So, um, but maybe it's time to get an oscillating tool. <laughs> One of my other most um, used power things is my shop vac. I, my shop vac sits 
literally sits in my living room, sucks up cat fur really nicely off hardwood floors, sucks up cat litter, sucks up, you know, and you can suck up water, you can dump it, you can start over, you don't have to buy bags, you don't have to take that bag up and have all that dust come out. I just turn it over and dump it into a, and I just have a little one. It's like um, a five gallon one, but it has wheels and it's, I use it probably every day. <laughs> so. To expand on that, that's a, that's a great thing. Um, at Menards, you can get, I believe the brand is Mastercraft. Uh, you can get one that's HEPA also. So if you are vacuuming, um, for example, Sam, when you use your roto zip, uh, now, okay, let's go back to ShopVac. ShopVac has HEPA cartridges that you can put on, but the seal around the lid is not airtight. So you're still circulating that. Yes, the 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 uh, the filter is HEPA, but the Mastercraft unit is a complete sealed compartment. So then when Sam is capturing his plaster, chances are there's some lead paint in that, or, you know, it's just an irritant. You don't want it circulating all over the house. Those, uh, and they're very reasonable. I want to say that I bought mine for like $60. Um, and it's, it's legit. It's great. It's on wheels also. Um, but I'd, I'd recommend if you're in the market for one of those, consider at least do a little bit of homework on that and find a good HEPA filter. And uh, especially doing the kind of stuff, I think most of you guys do remodel just like I do. And, uh, you know, lead awareness is coming back. It seems like it, it comes and goes based on um, how much block grant funding money there is out there, unfortunately. Uh, and it seems like it's coming back into the fray again. And that's a great item to uh, to purchase, in my opinion. Yeah, I think everybody should have a shop vac. <laughs> the, the shop vac that I'm going to buy, that we used to have at work, or I'm sure they still do, is the pumping shop vac. So you pull water into it. There's a place to hook on a garden hose you can run that 50 feet out. So you can be pulling water and pumping water at the same time. Now, I think those start like at $120. They're, they're not the cheaper shop vac. You, you have to. But so like you can turn it on and like pump the water that's flooded your basement or whatever without having to fill it, carry it up the stairs, dump it, go back down the stairs, hook it all back up. That would be great too. You've, if that was you've, done, this, you've yeah. done this procedure, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I wish I would have known about that. That's good to know, Gary. I didn't, I was not aware of that. Yeah. We oh. had, we had five dormitories and we had, we kept one in each dorm and with garden hose just dedicated to it. And when we'd have a disaster, we could pump it away instead of carrying that stuff all the time. So that was a, as I, as I replace my wet back, it's like, you know, I'm going to get myself one of those. I'll look for that next time. We, uh, we live over by Eagle Lake and when Eagle Lake flooded, I've got a big pond in front of my house and you can literally kayak from my basement stairs right out our walkout for two years literally yeah. for two years and so i mean i hauled thousands of gallons of water out of that basement over time until we got a berm built up and yeah. and i was able to keep control of it outside but it was in our house forever and that's what i was doing i had no idea there was such an animal good to know you guys have shared wonderful information i hope everyone watching um, has learned something or gotten an idea or just, you know, expanded what you want to put on your wish list. Um, thank you guys. It's as wonderful as always. Um, it's it's going to be fun to learn more as time goes on. And I hope you guys will rejoin us. I hope those of you watching um, felt it was worth your time. And don't forget, we'd love to see your donations. Um, 
get them done now for tax season. It's coming. The end of the year is coming. <laughs> Not the end of the world, just the end of the year. Um, again, if you have questions, you can send them to us at any time. And these lovely experts, I will pass them on and try to get answers for you. Um, thank you, Jason. I appreciate your lovely power tool also. And again, thank you and thank everyone for watching tonight. And we'll see you next Tuesday night at six o'clock for how to put your garden to bed for the winter. Um, so Gene, I have a question. I have a question. Are you doing the um, heating help this year too for donations? Um, uh, yeah. if, yes, we always that, do furnace, furnace help, yes. Well, um, people that couldn't pay for their heating, I, I'm just, I donated to that before for mm -hmm. for assistance, heating assistance. Right. Right. Is that something that's going to be happening again this year? I don't know if we're going to do a direct campaign for Furnace Fest like we have in the past. Okay. Um, but but you can send a donation check in I will. And say yeah. to help to help someone get a new furnace and just okay. put that in the memo line and it will be set aside for that that Great. issue okay. only. So, and Super. there again. It's a great thing to share if you um, are watching, you know, with your your company that you work for or something. You know, we could we we do so many furnaces as the weather changes that we can always use help. And there's people out there who have not had heat for you know some. We had one family that hadn't had heat for several years. They were heating their house with their stove, um, yeah. and that's not safe. It's not financially feasible um even even space heaters aren't financially feasible or necessarily safe you know it's okay for a day or two but it's not the way you should have to live right and so if you know of someone who doesn't have heat or hot water again just call our office that phone number has been going across the bottom all evening and zach our um, intake specialist will help people figure out how to go through the application process and thanks to generous people like tim you know, we can help you with a new furnace. So, very good. Again, thank you guys, and thanks for bringing that up, Tim. Um, mm -hmm. Never too late to remind people that, you know, world goes around because we all help. So, mm -hmm. um, again, thank you, and we'll see everybody next week. Good night, Bye, guys. Good to see you all. Bye.